for classes. Huge difference. So yeah. the transition was a lot easier. So I mean, what was it called? Tele Bears. Tele Tele they changed it yo, now. I think. Uh, yo, right at nine a.m. in the middle of classes. Open it. Open it. Open it. Yeah, you had talk about. Kind of, I will say, what a system, man. What kind of in terms of the curriculum, system. though? In terms of the structure, in terms of getting support from the um, terrible. I was still remember. Man. I yeah. still remember, if anybody ever comes to me with administration is nice at Berkeley, I vividly remember no, my I day of waiting for seven hours just to get one paper signed and like meet with my advisor, who I had never seen in my entire freaking life, and literally just sat sitting on the tile of the floor in a line with like 50 other kids. Yeah, I don't know what their hiring criteria is, but literally... The two criteria I would look for is that you care about the students and you give a damn. And neither of those were met by the administrations. I don't know what I, criteria they have for getting hired, but yeah. there's got to be a I huge I don't even know if it's just there. as much as the criteria as much as it is the system in place. No, I, but the people I, I are I there. I will yeah. say, yeah, I agree. The people had the power to make the changes. The system was there yes. to allow them to do it, but they would just be rude and unhelpful and uncooperative for no reason. And multiple times to multiple people that I know. Um, so it was not a good administrative system. Yeah, why don't you pick him up? Pick him up. Okay. I'll pick him bring, up. Him into the, bring him into the podcast. We yeah. currently have uh, young Starkey who is bothering us. And if you guys are joining us on YouTube instead of Spotify, you guys can see a uh, beautiful dog here. He got Starkey. a bit of a haircut, as you can Hello. see. And uh, lost most of How his doing? face on the his hair on his face. How you doing, little guy? And, uh, hey, little dude. There's a video coming out with him. Do you guys want to look? Yeah, there's a great video going to be out on our channel, by the way, uh, featuring Starkey here. <laughs> and okay, as you Starkey, can see, are you going to be good if I put you down? He's going to break everything. Please. He looks very excited for some reason. Oh, I think it is a numbers issue where they have way too many students. They're admitting way too many students and their resources can handle. But on top of that, it's a big issue when somebody that has a required class, say you're a pre-med and you have a required science class, you have to wake up at the precise time, put it in the code before anybody else does, uh, and or the class will fill up. That's how our system worked on how to pick classes. You have to be there on time, put in the code, or you will not get that class. You will be behind on your requirement. You have to stay there summer absolutely unacceptable and ridiculous to go get anything checked in you have to go to the administration hour-long lines hour-long waits it's just completely and then when you go there nobody wants to work for you they're just going to spit out some rule that can get you out of there as quickly as possible it is one of the worst administrations i have ever worked with there are so many horror stories coming out of that uc berkeley um, logistical center and it is partially due to a high volume problem it is partially also unfortunately due to i don't want to blast anybody have to lose a job or anything like that partially due to at least at the time the dean was absolutely Absolutely incompetent. The um, administration, the people that you work with on a day-to-day -day basis that don't want to help you on purpose, they want to just get the rule out, get you out, get the next person in. It's a volume issue, but at the same time, it's a lack of uh, caring for, for some of those students. So that's my mini rant on UC Berkeley. You've already seen us rant about it on the um, on the uh, video that we did previously on do you want to be a pre-med at Berkeley? And then we can, we, I'm not even getting into the professors because there are ridiculous stories about professors. Let me get into one of them. We were taking, I'll even tell you the class. It was 131, uh, something like that, physiology. It was, it was physiology, human physiology. The audacity of these professors during our final exam to all be mic'd up and walk around in the front of the uh, exam proc while proctoring us. They have their mics on, all making jokes and snickering and laughing and doing all we're taking a final exam, baby. What are you doing? And they're all just <laughs> walking around, they're joking, having a great time on top of that. The insult to injury, the worst written test on human physiology you will ever see, man. Like, where did they get this material from half the time? That's what a lot of the, the and then the key was why I know it wasn't just me being a loser. If you go after the exam, they, we had a message board on where you would go and talk to the rest of the class. It was a blasted. People were personally, because yeah. it was anonymous. We were blasting the professors. <laughs> you guys are incompetent. You guys, this is the worst class I've ever taken. Personal attacks, personal attacks, like really inappropriate language. Like we went in on these professors and uh, stuff like Did that I is just. Did we take physiology? Did we take it? No. Probably we did. We did. Regardless, oh, we they moved some of these professors I don't know. out. You, you didn't take it with me. I don't think I took it, yeah. So how was that? Let's talk about you guys. How was it taking classes with a sibling in the same class? I, used to I love We took it. a couple of classes together. I thought it was really fun. When me and Shaman had classes together, honestly, it's probably one of the best memories 
that I have of education just because shut up. You don't wow, Sean trying to be cool. <laughs> what man? is that? Try to cool be cool. guy, man. Yeah, like I didn't think it was that cool, my sister. Yeah, it little was cool. Sister. Um, it was really I think it was some of the funnest memories that I've had with my education. Like I would just remember like little fun things we used to do. Like the walks were fun to class, like before a quiz, me trying to tell Shaman stuff. Like they're gonna ask this, they're gonna ask this walking after outside the quiz. Shaman, that was terrible. Oh, I think I did okay. I think I did I put this. Oh man, Shaman, I put that. You're definitely right. Oh man. And like little things like I would run to Starbucks to get us some frappuccinos before yeah, our like I one and a half hour class. Class. like yeah. we would have some fun times but then they would also i don't think i ever really got annoyed with shaman did i not really you're pretty chill i think you we got, got annoyed, annoyed with... with each other sometimes really we did sometimes i feel like occasionally the... there was a time or two where i sat away from you because i was like oh my yeah. god <laughs> so we yeah. fight and we would yo if me. i'm trying to focus on my math 10b class here and I see some Jigglypuff on my left rolling her hair, turning this way, moving this way. <laughs> Zell, nothing written in the note box. Yeah. Um, I'd be like, bro, can you start? Yeah, he would <laughs> kind of tell me to pay more attention sometimes. I would fall asleep in certain classes. I would definitely get yelled at by him if I wasn't paying attention, but I don't know. Man, yeah, I, I think actually chill. went to class. I never even went to class. And then the other thing I remember is... Like Benita said, we're always talking before the uh, quiz, and she's giving me all the juice. And then she gets so salty after I obliterate her score. Because what and happens? And comes back and she's like, "I studied so much <laughs> more, and I gave you all the right answers." That's true. <laughs> she Sometimes we go that. into. I would. I would predict questions. Even to this day, I do that. I'm a question predictor. I literally would tell Shaman, Shaman, he's gonna ask you, "What is this species? This?" And I shall be like, "Oh, thanks. Good to know. I didn't." Yeah, but how do you get wrong? Quizzing. I would get those right, but I would get other ones wrong. Oh, she get no. the it's odd because she gets the simple questions wrong, which is super weird. Yeah. Like she'll overthink it. But it was um, fun having classes together, I think, for the most part. Yeah, I mean, overall I think it was really I fun. think we did a good amount. I think if we overdid classes together, we might have gotten more annoyed. I think we did a good amount, like one each semester here yeah. and there. Yeah. yeah, but you can already But it tell. did it did show that two siblings with similar genetic makeup, similar like academic ability. And the treatment by the, uh, we already talked about this a little bit, but the treatment yeah. by the GSIs and the professors were totally different oh, yeah. based on like male and female. Hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I think from hearing a lot of the, our stories, you guys can tell we were pretty, you guys especially were more comfortable there. You had to avoid the whole dorm situation. My big thing when I got there was the dorm living situation. And let me tell you right now, dorm living is cool for like a month or two but then it's absolutely overhyped for the entirety of living there i would not go back and recommend a dorm i'd be way more independent and get an apartment or wasn't like your that. roommate like your bff so i do rec I, I don't know what he's doing these days he went off to be an engineer that guy's goal was to win a nobel prize and he was really smart and i'm sure someday he will be if you're out there listening uh, a really great guy i think he's still working in a lab over there um so i had a great time with the roommate i never had any complaints with my roommate um the only complaints I did have was the dorm itself. So I remember when we had a mouse problem initially, man, it is, it is just weird living in a room where you know there's a mouse. Yeah, it feels like, so there's a couple of things humans are inherently uh, scared of, right? There's like research behind this. So humans are inherently, inherently never seen it before, inherently with a normal makeup of, a, of your, your brain networking, uh, uh, afraid of heights. You will always get that weird tingly feeling when you're over something, over a height or something like that. Again, you'll see a lot of people skydiving, do all this crazy stuff that's overcoming that fear. Or sometimes they can have something wrong or, or something different with their amygdala and their, their Okay, sensors. we got yeah, it. Yeah, we get <laughs> it, sweetie. It's inherent. Yeah, I'm trying to go into this, guys. So those snakes, <laughs> heights, spiders, Stop trying to mice. justify that you're a grown ass man scared of a mouse, okay? That's Call all you're out. trying to do. So it's also depends on the context, right? You see a mouse in Petco, you're not really scared of it. When you see a mouse that could be anywhere in your room and, and eating, the way we found out the mouse, we were lying, he was lying, sounds weird to say the sentence, but we were trying to go to sleep and uh, we hear like this rustling sound, right? We're like, what the hell is that, dude? Did, did you do that? And I was like, no, I didn't do that. Let's just be quiet for a second. We saw the Cocoa Krispies box, my chocolate Cocoa Krispies box move by itself. And we're like, oh, that's when it clicked, right? Because we had been hearing these sounds over the past couple of days. We're like, what? And then it clicked when we saw that. We're like, oh, shit. 
we have a mouse. And then, unfortunately, we had to get rid of that mouse. We, we had a, a trap set out for it. Of course, you um, had to get rid of it. What were you going to do? Be best friends with it? Like Kim Possible? I don't know. These days, I any also kind of roost, harm. Uh, that was a rooster? It's called Rufus. It was a Rufus. hamster. Yeah, Rufus hamster. hamster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Rufus. That's God, hamster. Was ugly. Those are different than mice and rats. So, so that's kind of the beginning of my horror story. Then we had an absolutely obnoxious uh, 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 roommate because uh, our, our rooms were all connected. So here's our room and then the room next over and the walls connected. This guy, man, he would have people over all the time. You'd have parties till like 2 a.m. And it was a midterm day the next day. And I, I remember going back. Uh, now I remember back then. I don't know if I would even do the same stuff. I would be so fed up. I'd bang on the walls, be like, dude, shut up. I went out there multiple times, told them, dude, I have an exam tomorrow. Back then, I probably looked like the little nerdy kid, uh, you know, breaking up all the fun and stuff. But like, dude, I got a midterm tomorrow and you're out here having this party. I was, I was annoyed for sure. Yeah, definitely this talk makes me miss college, though. I feel like, I don't know, there's so much more freedom. And just like so oh, there, it's, it's freedom until you walk into your bathroom and see these guys washing their dude, underwear okay. in the okay, sink. This, I feel like Herman's whole uh, thing with Berkeley has been complaining about the city, <laughs> complaining about his dorm. He wants us to think he was some but I'm poorly trying... wrecked little poor Yo, wait, wait, time child. out, time out. After all these complaints, let me tell you what a disaster it is being Herman's roommate. Yep, though. Herman's let me call the this dirtiest guy. You're calling roommate. out random homeless people. You're yep. calling out the city. Yep. You're called calling out homeless out people. Your Facts. Roommate. You're, you didn't do that, but Facts. you called out everything else. I got to call out this kid first. Facts. I was going to get to the positives, okay. just FYI, but go ahead. I like to put all the okay. negatives up front. Yo, Same with our overrated. Yo, 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 listen. Play the facts, Living with this guy was such a disaster that the SWAT team came in on us. Oh, that's okay? another time. That's Literally, a damn deep story. You want to go into yeah, that? Yeah, maybe we'll get it. into that another time. But this guy is such a disturbing piece of crap. Well, you might want to expand on that story now or else no, uh, people it's will think I'm... No, it's too long. <laughs> it's not anything bad. Just... <laughs> I don't know. We'll go into it yeah, next time. Up to you. Okay. It's up to you. No, we'll go you into it next time. We'll go into it next time. But for this time, um, I want to get to the positive. So even after all that crap he I just, just talked, I really miss not really UC Berkeley, but the city of Berkeley. Benita, don't you remember the RSF? The RSF is an amazing Yeah, that's place. what I'm saying. Like, I remember, like, my, even my first semester, I was like, ah, oh, the gym is so cool. And the craziest part is they definitely always, it's with this everywhere mm -hmm. in life for us, upgrade after. Upgrade, upgrade after. Upgrade after. after. Always after moving, and even Mayo right now, they're upgrading like yeah, to a yeah. totally beautiful building here that I never got to be a part of. Yep. It's just like always the upgrades come after us. Yep. And uh, RSF stands for Recreational Sports Facility or something like that. Amazing place. Uh, shout out to the entire community. They have a great yeah, place to play basketball, get some great runs in, great gym. Uh, good, again, nice, good characters in the gym. You see the same people, people all the time. Yeah. You get your own little narratives going on in there. Uh, uh, the guy you're competing and with. It's nice and being like around like all college people too. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's Similar. fun. Yeah, yeah, everyone's kind of on the same page. Everyone's, you know, some people are wearing shirts from YouTubers that you recognize and stuff, and like you know that they're in your generation. So very interesting, interesting time to be at UC Berkeley. I had a great experience. Now, would that. you overall ever not go to UC Berkeley if you could go back? If I could go back just to make my life easier. I would actually care about sending applications into private schools. I think I sent them into a couple of schools, didn't give a crap about it because again, like I said, we were secured with UC Davis. I thought I was going to be going to UC Berkeley, like really didn't care. But I would go back and put a little more time to that because there is a different kind of treatment you get going to a private university. It really is catered to you. They care about you. You, Shaman? I'd go to Berkeley again. Again, I everyone stop lying. Liar. I'm not lying. Everyone, Liar. Everyone made this narrative that there's gunners everywhere. The people are for, to me. You were made super the nice. narrative, sweetheart. Yeah, I, no, I, didn't. <laughs> I, I didn't. Not <laughs> everywhere. They're a minority, like every place. So you go overall, here again. I found the people super friendly. I found you think like, it was a there. nurturing environment for your career? No, I think doctor. I think for the vast majority <laughs> of people, the academic hurdles are just a little too strenuous like i don't know what your ap bio teacher was making you do over like the summer that guy's a whole um, story. That yeah is. like absurd requirements for one class um so i think that in, if you're gonna academically struggle or if that's a big <laughs> issue with you do not go to berkeley at all costs so you're saying you that did you not are go, so, because you are a prodigy you wouldn't repeat it and that's what because, is no, saying. because <laughs> i'm able to overcome the hurdle but i would be salty as hell if i got yeah bad grades at birth. And I would say like, I mean, I think out of all of us, probably Shaman's the only one who would say that 
I mean, not he would be the only one to say, but I would even say that Shaman is probably one of the few people that I know who, you know, even without Herman there, like even without the little extra yeah, drop him anywhere yeah, guidance, I think well. you could drop him anywhere and he would do amazing and figure out the system and figure out his techniques. I think he's just a very in, insightful person like that. Wasn't there a person you were about to fight beneath? I, mean, I was just... about to fight a lot of people at Berkeley. I remember even oh, when I was t- thinking my taking my graduation pictures. Remember Herman, that girl? Oh, that, like, that was, was like, just annoying. That was just like really late. What happened? So what had happened was happened I spent was... probably I would say like at least five hundred to a thousand hours at RSF. Right, <clears throat> it was a huge part of my life. It was a huge part of my who I am today, like my love for weightlifting definitely really blossomed in the RSF. It was a great escape for me, part of my schedule every day. I love the RSF. It was probably 50% of my experience at Berkeley. And so I, part of my graduation picture, I had seen people do this before and I wanted to get a picture in the RSF, like especially like holding weights, like in my cute little dress. I just thought it was a funny idea. I've seen people do it before. And especially me, like having so much love for it, I want to do it. So I went in there in my dress and obviously looking like, you know, not gym attire that was, was like, required a lot of confidence just right off the bat to even yeah but i was just like you know what i am gonna do this i mean Sean, herman helped hype me up and he was like you are gonna like these pictures it's gonna give a great memories and i really wish we had a picture because it probably yeah. would bring back a lot of memories and i went in there confident in my heels I asked this guy, I was like, hey, dude, do you mind if I just take a quick graduation picture with your squat rack? He already had like 45 set up. So it was going to be like my weight. It was great. And I get there. I'm sitting. I'm like literally setting up like really fast. And I just knew we were going to get one shot before we got kicked out or something because that's how they are there. And immediately Herman's setting up to take the picture. Some guy taps on Herman's shoulder. Hey, dude, you can't do that here. And we were like, what? And Herman he was cool with it. That he, guy, was cool. he was sent he by was somebody. Cool. And Herman was just like, what? Why not? Can she just get one? He's like, nah, dude, you just got to go talk to her. She's the one kind of yeah. saying it. So I, we went over there and we were like, we can't get one picture. And she was like, nope, you can't even get one. I was like, literally just one picture. She was like, read the sign. There's no pictures in here. I was like, I literally see thousands of people's stories in the gym on Instagram. How come you don't yell at them? How come you don't yell at people who are like, I'm literally just trying to get one for graduation. Nobody's in my picture. And she was just like, well, sorry. Nope. Nope. I was like, it's my last day on campus. Just let me get one picture. I I was just like, well, I hope you do this to every, I better not see a single story on Instagram anymore, lady. I literally told her that I was just so pissed. Yeah. I think one of the backstory that people get, we respect rules. Obviously if the rule was to do that, blah, 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 you shouldn't do it. Everyone was cool with it. Like when he says, everyone uses their No one was in the picture. In the no guy, was in the everyone picture. was excited for me. I, I, you could definitely see people were like, oh, that's Not really cool. Not only that, like, I think this was a girl also that would been eyeing you in the gym because she works out there as well. And she already had like a vendetta or something against you. I don't know. Was I was weird. not a fan of her attitude. I would it never was, do that to somebody. Like I would just turn a, a blind eye for like some uh, nice girl yeah, to get her graduation Yeah, of course. Picture. Again, like I said, we can't blame somebody for not wanting to break the rules because it's against the rules we're asking her to do that oh but come on everyone's they cool broke them it. all yeah, day she long seemed like she had something personal set out for you and it's not okay. like we're doing it does everyone anyways. want some wise words yes let's hear okay. the wise man's well, why does the got the wise, wise words of word? advice here okay there are rules right however if you too rigidly follow every rule in life you're going to end up making things harder for everyone in in the world like if everyone rigidly followed rules the world would be a worse place i know that sounds crazy to some like uh berkeley nerds in the library who are like you got to show me your id card but i remember like going to the same library like oh yeah 11, I remember literally, that. like I remember 11 that. times that week and the 12th time i like for left my id somewhere and i came person. in and the same same person and they're like yo you can't go in here you don't have your id card i'm like yo i i'm because it's to prove you're a student you know i'm a student here i come here with my id card every every day, every yeah. day. and uh, the the person was still like nope i'm sorry that's our rules it's mm-hmm. like okay but what is the rule in place for the rule is in there so that only students get into the library and if you know i'm a student you see me every day here i even say hi to you <laughs> yeah. um then that kind of circumvents that rule you should be like all right whatever i'm telling you right now at yale or anywhere else that i've been even in my high school they'd be like yeah whatever you're good 
Uh, but Berkeley also, I think, has this systemic problem with mm -hmm. too rigidly yep, following every rule in the book. Yep. Yeah, and, I, and so, that's a great point. Uh, that just to bring up in life, um, you, you, like you're saying, you can apply to everything. And I think if you're that person that has, say you made an extra frappuccino at Starbucks and you're going to throw it in the garbage anyway, but you want to be the guy that gives an extra frappuccino to the person, that is the right way to go in, in terms of being a um, positive person, being a person that is going to be liked, that is a person that is probably going to uh, understand why rules are there, right? Like, obviously, you don't want to give free food away, but if you're going to go throw it in the trash anyway, logically, And there's someone sense. who you feel like is not going to bother you again and again with that every day. Like, it's just like a family with like a kid or something. Mm -hmm. Like, just hand the crap like, over. Yeah, like, the there's something definitely to be said, Sharma. That's a great, great point that we run into this all the time, all the time. And no, I think you... Berkeley has that a ton. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah. Just kind of redirecting it back to Berkeley. I remember even with like GSI, Dude, I'm at an 89.4. I know. Just freaking round me up. Like, I no, know it's in your power. Here's the other issue. And even they go further than that. Like, I think I told a story about the person who uh, I took one of their tests. And then they were totally wrong. There was two answers to the, to the question. Um, because you could take the interpretation of one of these little... Um, just basically, it was two answers to the question, 100%. The... Professor even agreed to it, but because he was so rigid mm -hmm. in yep. his, creating answer, his answer being mm -hmm. right, he's like, I'll give him half a point because he knows that I'm going to totally destroy his argument if he wants to continue it with me. Yeah. And so we went back and forth over like eight emails and he just kept, he just kept going barrier after they barrier, um, getting proven wrong. And then he's like, all right, I'll give you half a point for this. And it's like, yeah. why? Yeah. What is wrong with like people so rigidly sticking to Ego. what has been in their head? Um, yep. and you just don't want to be that person. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So, but yeah, I get if the purpose of that picture was they don't want other people in the picture. They don't want guys taking pictures of like girls working out or something. I get if the intention is there, but if there's literally a girl with no one else in the picture doing, yeah. taking one picture for graduation, just let it go. Just let it go. Like what is wrong with you at that point? Even everybody else. I, is I like... think, I think some people do take like a sadistic pleasure in yeah. denying oh, people. For sure. Love she enjoyed it. She enjoyed it. That's and I made, that's why when I could tell she was enjoying it, that's when I went in a little harsh and I was like, you're not going to enjoy this. You're going to get triggered. And she did feel like a loser after all her friends were like, Ooh, that's what I'm saying. All her friends, when your friends are like looking at you, like, do you really want to be that person that wants to, you know, deny somebody that I, it's just, it's always a good look when you, when you go the extra mile to help somebody put yourself in their shoes and just also that just goes moves. to another um, point in that I think I developed a lot of this in Berkeley is just a lot of self-confidence to just yes. be like, bro, I'm not taking your bullshit. I developed a lot of that in Berkeley. I like, remember Shaman when I told you and I talked about this story with that GSI who told me I was cheating. And I literally, I don't mm. give a shit who you are. You're 10 years older than me. I don't care. How dare you accuse me of that? I'm literally yeah. handing out her my answers. So yeah. I literally <laughs> said that to her. I was like, how dare you? I was like, yeah. I'm literally giving her my answers. Yeah. And like, I don't understand how you could say that. Do you want to see my paper? Yeah. And uh, the context for this, it was literally a morning workshop where yeah. people discussed the answers yeah. to last night's homework. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what else are you and supposed to do? And she was saying, like, she was kicking us out of the room. So we were quickly scrambling to, like, share what we, we were doing. And yeah. the girl had no problem with it that I was talking to. We were both talking. So I definitely developed a uh, no bullshit policy because of running into, like, sticklers or people who are entitled. 100%. Stuff like that. And I think you do develop that when you encounter these types of systemic hurdles at Berkeley yes. that we probably wouldn't have if we were handed everything in a private institution or something like that. But I mean, you know, that's the silver lining, I guess, in that we are more prepared for the real world, but um, definitely wish I didn't have to deal with some unnecessary dramatic people. Yeah. And my hypothesis is that we're going to see more of these people in the future because we have whole generations, like huge amounts of people that are rigidly going through what their parents say through high school, through college, they're rigidly listening to like what their GSI, their professor says. They're following like every rule to a T. Um, and I think that kind of like methodical uh, life organization mm -hmm. or like path, I don't know how to describe it, but that kind of way of thinking um, that's not flexible is detrimental to, I think, our society. Yeah, and I think even if you are gonna go into medicine, I think you do have to, you will be a better physician if you have developed these kind of confident 
uh, personality traits to advocate when you detect something is wrong. I do know some uh, like just people who I don't think have the personality traits to stand up for what they believe in, whether it's they're just so scared that they're going to get reprimanded or like they're just so scared of the consequences that they don't stand up for what they believe in versus if I have a problem, my personality is definitely for sure to just say what my problem is in a respectful way. However, if you don't have that personality trait, I think it makes you a worse physician. Hmm. What do you think about all that, Herman? Or what do you want to talk about here? No, I think that's a great you got way any to kind other of stories. No, I think that's a great way to segue it off. I, you know, we've been going on and on about relationships in Berkeley, and uh, we went in for a good time here. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed our stories. I hope you guys enjoyed our rants. Um, I you know it's a more student focused topic. I think next time there's a couple uh, interesting topics I want to deal with on the podcast that uh, might get a little debatey around here. So uh, make sure you guys. Follow us, subscribe here. I know we also post this on Spotify. Follow Corbidi's channel. Uh, Isn't this going on some student podcast somewhere? Yeah, hopefully. If we'll we'll submit it to students' podcast on Spotify. And, and make sure you guys engage in the comments below. We love to have a conversation with you guys down there. So if you guys have any stories at your college that's similar to this, or if you go to UC Berkeley right now, we would love to hear about that. And then also, uh, you know, how are you dealing with the relationships if you're out there as a uh, high school student? Are you using these apps as young as that or college student like what are you exactly doing especially with covid uh we'd love to hear what's going on maybe uh, we'll take some notes uh, for ourselves uh so make sure you guys engage with us like comment subscribe to both of this channel and core beauties and thank you guys so much for watching this podcast we are listening to this podcast or watching it and thank you guys so much and we'll see you guys in the next one bye later